So in our previous video, we created a file to show us how JavaScript works, but we don't need that file anymore. So I will delete that file. And so if we go to our folder, uh, as you can see even right here, we have index.php. So what I want us to learn now is how to collect data from the server using JavaScript. Okay, so this object not found anymore. And here is our chat system. So I want to be able to get some information and display it right here in our interface. So let me go to P, uh, index.php. Now the panel that I want to uh, deal with is the inner left panel, which is this one. Oh, sorry, not that one. The inner left panel. So let's create some JavaScript down here. So let's go down, down, down to the bottom of the page and let's add some script tags like so. Okay, so script tags here and I'm going to say now, let's get the element that we require. Okay, so I'm going to grab the element and say var uh, inner, I'm going to call it inner panel. This is just an example. So inner panel is equal to document dot get element by ID like this. Okay. And then I'll put my ID in there. That's inner left panel. And that's exactly how we learned how to do this. So we're going, we are grabbing this item. So let me remove the, the, the hash there. So we are grabbing this item and putting it in, in a panel. Now, the thing is with uh, JavaScript is we're going to be saying document.getElementById a lot because every item that we need to grab, we'll need to use this same syntax right here. And it can make your life miserable because you're retyping this over and over. So what we could do is simply create a function that will perform this action for us. So let me simply copy this whole thing and create a function up here or down here, wherever it is. Let me put it up here. I'll say function. Now, the thing is, we are trying to make the typing process a bit easier. So the function name, I'll simply name it underscore like this. That's all I'll do. That's the name of the function, the underscore, and then open close bracket and then do that. And then inside here, I will put document.getElementById by ID like this. And then I'll simply put a variable called le short for element or I'll just say element like this so that uh, for readability and then I'll pass it in here. So what's happening here is that every time we put an underscore and put in brackets, whatever value we put in that brackets will be assigned to this variable called element. And then in here, uh, inside the function, the function will perform a document.getElement by ID for us and put whatever ID we've supplied in there. And then it's going to return this value like so. So to see this in action, what we would do we would replace this whole thing with simply removing this and putting an underscore like this. So every time we put underscore and whatever ID we put, this function will run and return the element that we want and put it in whatever variable that's there. All right, so now that we have that out of the way, the typing is easier. So we've grabbed this element right here and we want to add some data there. So what we would do is we'll say inner panel dot inner HTML is equal to, this is some data. So this is how you change the HTML inside an item. You use the dot inner HTML like this. Okay, so if now we refresh the page, we will see that uh, the inner HTML, this is some data. That's what we get. Okay, as simple as that, our JavaScript has worked. Now, instead of doing this, we want to read the data from the server. So we imagine this is on our web page, but we want to read what's on the server. So what we will do is go to our text editor here and in the folder, right click and say new file. We want to create a file that will contain the data. So I will just type something like this is some, this is some data 
from the server like this and save this file i'll save it as a file.txt a text file it doesn't matter the file extension as long as it's a text document so file.txt it contains this is some data from the server so this data represents a file on the server that we want to read so how do we do that now this is where ajax comes in the language that we use to communicate asynchronously with the server so what we're going to do is create a function first here say function read underscore data like this All right and then we'll put our current data code in there we don't need this one so when we call read data this is what will happen the data will be read okay now in order for us to call this function uh, let's add an on click listener to something let's say this label right here okay with an id of this one label chat so what we're going to do is grab this item oops let's do it right here i'm going to say the button is equal to and then we grab the element there like so okay so we've created we've grabbed the label and named it uh, button or uh, maybe label just to be more specific so then we add an event listener so you say label dot add sorry so also this typing of add event listener is quite tedious you can do exactly the same thing and create a function that does it for you like this one but in this case it's just one thing so we're going to say click that's the event we want and then we want to run a function when this happens and that function will be to read the data okay like so let's put our semicolon there so we'll get rid of this function right here since uh, we are doing it from internally there oops okay okay so we grab the label we add an event listener so whenever it's clicked everything in here will run so let's start by doing that we grab the inner panel and then now we create an ajax uh object so to do that we're going to say var let's find a simple name a descriptive name like ajax is equal to new xml http request now please note the capitalization uh, there if it doesn't uh, highlight like this then you did something wrong so this is an ajax object we are creating that will help us to read the data from the uh, server without actually refreshing the page which is really really cool so what we do is immediately we grab this thing we start listening for a result before we even send the data now the reason is that sometimes um, we would send the data and it comes back really quickly and then we'll lose it because we are not listening for it yet so the first thing we do is we listen so let's say let's add an if statement and say if ajax dot um what's that word dot status we are checking for the status if the status is equal to 200 or uh, what's the other thing uh or ajax dot actually what we need to do this here is to add this on the load event sorry about that so what i would do is that i'll say ajax dot onload so this is an event that happens when it loads is equal to function like this okay so this is similar to when we are adding an event listener and creating a function so here when this ajax thing loads then it's equal to this function which we are going to run as well here so in this one when it loads we add an if statement in there so we are checking for the status to be 200 which means okay 
and also we are checking for the ready state if the ready state is 4 these are the values that we are given by the people that designed this ajax thing so you just have to use them uh, 200 means okay ready state 4 means the data has been returned and then when the data is returned we get this inner panel and display that data so we're going to say the panel dot inner html html is equal to ajax dot response text i don't know if that's a uh, function or it's just response text like this. I think it's just like that. Okay. So now remember that we haven't actually sent the data. So this on load is where we are listening, but then let's send the data right here. So what we're going to uh, do is read from a file. So we'll say Ajax dot open. So we're opening this and the method we are using can either be get or post. So in our case, let's use post request. It doesn't really matter at this point. And then we are going to tell it what file we are looking for. So the file we are looking for is on the server. It's called file.txt. So we're going to say file.txt. And then we put the true at the end there. Now this true should always be there. You can, you can leave it out. However, true means the data should be read asynchronously, meaning it shouldn't disturb your interface when reading this data. So I would advise you put this here true. Otherwise, there's no, it defeats the purpose of using Ajax. Okay. Now, at this point, you can de uh, describe the type of data that you want. Like, for example, if this data is in form of JSON that you are sending. But in this case, we are not sending any data, really. We're just reading from it. So we're going to say Ajax.send. Just like that. Now, if you are sending some data, you would actually put the data in here. Like for example, where you say uh, data is equal to some text like this. This would be the data that you send. So we're going to see how we do that in future videos. But for now, this is it. So let's see if this will actually work. So I'll refresh this and the data is gone. So this should work when I click this button. And as you can see, once I clicked there, this is some data from the server. Excellent. So we've read from the file here that is on the server. Uh, let me see this. This is the file right here. So we've managed using this to read the file that is here. Now this file here doesn't have to be a, uh, it doesn't have to be a, a TXT file. It can be a PHP file. It can be a JavaScript file or whatever content, it could be an image and so on and so forth. As long as you declare the type and so on, things are going to work. Like for example, if we get this file.txt and convert it to something else, let me come here and make sure it's not open. Oh, there we go, it's still open. So what I can do is convert this guy into, let's say a PHP file. Righty. Now I can grab this guy, put it here. And since this is PHP, it will still work just like this. It will be the same result. However, I can still put some PHP tags like this. And once you put your PHP tags, for you to see some content, you have to actually echo it out. So whatever is echoed by this page is the returned data. So if you want, any data to be returned simply echo it out or print it right here in the page and the other side will receive it so let's change this to printed data from the saver so let's refresh this and let me click on chat okay so it's telling me that object not found so as you can see any errors that you get uh, are returned just like this Okay, so if there's an error happening on your page in the Ajax there, you're going to see it right here. Now, the reason is because we don't have that file anymore. We have to change, uh, it's refer referring to a different file. So let me go back to here. In here, we've told it to read from file.txt, which doesn't exist. So we'll change this to file.php. 
that should sort our problem out so let me refresh and click there and there you see printed data from the server so this is the basic idea of our chat system we're going to be retrieving data from the server just like this and the power of using uh, a PHP file to do this is I can actually read from the database and echo the data right here and Ajax or the JavaScript here is going to be able to capture that data. All right, so I'll see you in the next video where we continue to see how we can uh, make this chat system possible.